Welcome to my hometown park that I've been going to for the past 21 years. A must-see zoo that has exotic animals from all over the world, including animals that live in my favorite region of the zoo, and that would be Asia Quest. My favorite region opened in 2006, so it's the fourth newest exhibit here at the zoo, with Poor Frontier taking third, Heart of Africa second, and the brand new Adventure Cove takes first for being the newest exhibit here at the zoo. But before Asia Quest opened, this area of the zoo was very different, so let's go back in time to see what these previous exhibits look like. I'm gonna guess between the 1950s to the early 2000s, this was the old herbivores and carnivore exhibits, which had, well, obviously some of the old fashioned exhibits, kind of like grottos and other exhibits like that. Some of the exhibits look like the Milwaukee County Zoo exhibits. Most of these exhibits in this old area were pretty large, displaying animals from three different continents, such as South America, Africa, and Asia. The animals that were in this region were giraffes, zebras, camels, lions, okapis, and Bengal tigers, and more. Some animals like the camels, giraffes, zebras, and lions were moved to Heart of Africa, okapis in the Congo, and the Bengal tigers and other animals in the region, well, I do not know where they went to. In the mid 2000s, the area closed and a huge renovation began. So it used to look like this, and now it's like this. There are now over 20 exhibits displaying over 30 animals from the tropical rainforests of Southeast Asia, the mountains of Central Asia, the bamboo forests of China, and the taiga forests of Russia. It is now time to begin our amazing adventure in asia quest as we go through the archway we come across two exhibits we will be starting on the left side with this beautiful waterfall there are two species in here on this day the red crown cranes they were not out surprisingly but i got to see the roommates the rare and unusually feigned tufted deer a species that gets its name from the tufts of hair on its head here at the Columbus Zoo, there are three individuals, including a newborn fawn born in early January of this year, a male named TJ. Don't worry everyone, we'll be seeing another cute baby in a bit. Right across from the tufted deers and red crown cranes is the other exhibit. In the water, I saw two giant Malaysian pond turtles, the first time I ever see this species in this exhibit. The real owner of this exhibit is the rare Siberian musk deer. Even though I don't have any footage of them, I managed to get these lucky shots. The best time to see the species out and about is during the winter, because during the warmer seasons, they are mostly hiding in their shelter in the bushes. As we continue down the path, we come across the next exhibit, which is designed for a species of primates, which indeed, there is a primate in this exhibit, which, well, it's actually quite rare of zoos. The silver leaf langur, as you can see right here, but we will encounter them again indoors. As we pass the gong, we head to one of our first three buildings here in Asia Quest, which, well, I think it used to be the old giraffe house. As you enter, you may notice these statues of tigers. Some of them are completely full, which is the living, and the ones that are destroyed that went extinct, sadly. It's also hard to miss the dragon that plays a video of how time to save Asia's wildlife is running out as well as these maps of showing where the animals that live here in Asia. And the next room is where, well, kind of like a marketplace somewhere in India or near the Himalayas. As we finally made it to our first exhibit inside, it's some sort of garden shed or barn. I don't know. But anyway, in 2013, this is home to clouded leopards, which no longer live here at the zoo. And also in 2014, it was home to the rare Amor leopards. But now today, it's home to the sleeping sloth bears. This is all I got from this view, but luckily there's another viewing just up ahead for the bears. As you're heading to the next room, you'll get a view of the bears outdoor exhibit, which there is another view later. We are now in our next hallway, which has a couple of reptiles and small mammals. We'll begin here in the left, and surprisingly, I caught the active moments of the common Asian water monitor a relative of the venomous Komodo dragon. 
it's one of two reptiles here in Asia Quest. Right next door is the largest reptile here in Asia Quest. This was also home to a Tokei Gecko, which you can now find in the reptile house. But today, you will find the longest snake in the world, the reticulated python. This is a female named Jackie, which arrived here a few years ago. I believe she is the largest snake here at the zoo. I'm assuming she probably weighs about two to 300 pounds. And well, like I said, it is the longest snake in the world, maximum up to 20 to 25 feet long, longer than the anaconda and the Burmese python. Here in Asia West, this exhibit was home to the, yes, the longest snake in the world. In 2007, this exhibit was once home to Fluffy, also a reticulated python. She grew up to 25 feet long and 300 pounds, making her the longest snake in the world. But she passed away in 2010. A few years later, the zoo got Hannah, Fluffy's daughter, where she's been here for a couple of years. But like Fluffy, she also passed away at the age of 18. As we continue down, we come across this large garden plaza exhibit. I say it's a garden plaza because, well, it looks like a garden in the middle of the jungle. It has benches, little rocks, straws, more potted plants, and oh yeah, I almost completely forgot. Giant bats. More specifically, two mega bats. The large flying foxes right here, and the little golden mantle flying foxes, as you can see right here. These two bats, well, are actually quite rare to find. Out of all the zoos I went to, I have not seen either large flying foxes or golden mantle flying foxes. And no people, the golden mantles are not babies. While I was filming, and while it was eating some of the bats food, I managed to caught, well, my favorite bird here at the zoo. And the funny thing is, this bird is actually not native to Asia, it is actually native to Australia. But I'm assuming it hangs out with bats since, well, Australia is home to a lot of species of bats. But anyway, this is the blue-faced honey eater. Like Jackie, the birds got here also a few years ago, and they've been hanging out in this exhibit ever since. Now, you're probably wondering why the birds are not in the Australia aviary in the roadhouse. That was my problem too, but um, I'm gonna guess that, well, the honey eaters did not get along with any of the other birds in the roadhouse aviary which is why they've probably been moved inside here along with the bats and two other animals that I'll mention in a moment. I just really love these birds because, well, if you get a moment, if you caught them standing still and almost looking at you, you might get a good picture like this. And I never stop looking at this beautiful picture of the honey eater. Three animals down, two to go. Now, if you look closely in this box, you can kind of see a small figure right here. And of course, it was inactive. This is a Greater Malaysian Sheverton, a species that arrived here at the zoo in March of 2020. I don't know quite the number of Shevertons in exhibit, but I'm gonna guess there are probably three, which all three have came from the Bronx Zoo in New York. We're moving on, but you're probably wondering where's the fifth animal in the exhibit? Well, we'll counter it later. But now it's time to go back to see a familiar animal that we encountered back outside. There are two exhibits in here viewing for both of the same species. Well, which kind of makes it sense since this is kind of a jungle theme exhibit. But this is home to the rare silver leaf langurs, like I was talking about back outside. For those of you who live in Columbus, the exhibits look like this back then, a few years ago, until a huge renovation occurred in 2018. But yeah, silver leaf lingers. But um, how rare are they? I believe there's like only 60 of them here in America. These monkeys are also special because they do something very special called allo mothering, which means the females can help another female raising the young. Reason why? Because they're born bright orange, as you can see here. And, well, they are just super adorable. Hey, Josh. Anyway, me and my buddy, well, we're now heading to our next stop, which has been drawing a big crowd this past summer. Welcome to the Vanishing Giants, which right now, if you come in the early morning, you'll meet Indian Elephant's Phoebe and her calf. This little guy was born on June 16th, 2021, and you're about to see him in... <laughs>
Alrighty guys, I'm back, and let's go inside in the building. And now, elephants are not quite done just yet. As well as another pachyderm that we will see in a bit. The first exhibit in here, which is actually quite small, is for another pachyderm, which, again, we'll see in a bit. The next exhibit is home for the elephants. And on this beautiful afternoon, I managed to caught Sundara and Rudy. Two young females that came here in 2016 from Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey. These females were brought here not only to just hang out with the other elephants, but will hopefully one day become mothers like Phoebe. And you may have already seen them. They've been hanging out with Phoebe and the calf, which as you can see, they have been doing absolutely amazing with Phoebe's calf. We also have a young male that hopefully one day will breed Sundara and Rudy, which we'll be seeing him in a bit. But on this afternoon, as you can see, they like to hang out with him on other times. Even though all three, Sundara and Rudy and the male are still technically kids, they can still have a lot of time before they have to do a serious job here at the Columbus Zoo in the aquarium. Well, as you can see, with these two are moving on, so are we. But before we go, you may come across this sign of all individual elephants here at the zoo. We're back outside, back on the main path through Asia Quest, but we're kind of going back to the first half with a previously mentioned species. Yep, this is the sloth bear exhibit, which I was really lucky to caught this guy or gal walking towards me. A few years ago, before the sloth bears came, this was also home to another more rare species of bear. The Bornean Sun Bear, which was here when Asia Quest opened in 2006. Which, I miss seeing these guys, but sloth bears are more becoming more rare, which is why they've been brought here in Columbus. As I heard of, the zoo is home to two bears, a male named Randir and a female named Heidi Rose. Hopefully, like they did in Cleveland, we will hopefully breed here as well. There have been several breeding attempts, but I do not know where the results were at. But hopefully, again, we'll have bear cubs here. I was very lucky to caught this one at the glass. But if you move down the path, you'll get another better view of the bear exhibit. Here's a fun fact about this exhibit. Before Asia Quest opened, this exhibit was supposed to house giant pandas. Which, it did happen in the current Bonobo exhibit in the Congo. It is one of the best of its kind in America. And as you can see, I caught this one don't know if it's Randy or Heidi Rose, out in the open, which is quite rare to see. And again, really got an amazing shot. Probably one reason why the bears have been usually walking on this ledge is to take a look at their neighbors right across from them, which we're about to see right now. Yep, so their neighbors is an, again, another previously mentioned species. This huge 70,000 square foot habitat is home again to our elephants. It even comes with a very nice pool and very large shade structures that was added in 2019. But yep, this is home to the Indian elephants again. We have Connie, Phoebe, Hank, Rudy, Sundara, and Biko. But anyway, out here in the yard, first up is the big one. Big boy Hank. Hank is the father of Frankie, the baby calf. Hank was born in Bush Gardens, Tampa, worked at the Bronx Zoo, and worked at the company Half Trunk with Travel. And believe it or not, you're actually looking at the largest elephant in America. At 10 feet tall, and he weighs up to 16,000 pounds, much bigger than an African elephant. It is quite amazing to get up this close to an animal that's, well, way bigger than me. And, well, comparing with him to some of the females, he is pretty much a giant. If you came here from late spring and early summer of 2021, you may notice that Hank has been hanging out with Biko, because, well, with both being males, they usually like to be a little boisterous and like to hang out. I even caught them swimming in the pool, which was really, really, really lucky that I ever caught it. So, without further ado, have a look. Yeah, 
And that's all the elephant baths, but now it's time to meet the next one, Miss Connie, the oldest elephant here at the zoo. I do not quite know what her age is, but I know she's been a close companion to Phoebe, but with Phoebe having the calf, well, it'll take her a while to get, well, the whole herd back together again. Which, hopefully one day, Connie will meet the baby for the very first time. We're moving on, but elephants are not done yet, and here you'll see why. Now begins the tiger forest, which you might come across these sculptures of male cutout tigers, those are still living and those extinct, like the statues in back in the first building. We're moving from India to the eastern Himalayas to something that is very, very, very cute in this area. And it's also home to Asia Quest, well, one of Asia Quest's escape artists which, well, that was pretty big in 2020, and here's why. If you don't spot the animals on the ground, you may need to look up, way up. As you can see right here, sleeping in the tree. This is home to the zoo's red pandas, which, well, we had to move on just a little bit, but pandas are not done yet. Now you see why cuteness is always big in this exhibit. Anyway, the red pandas, my second favorite animal here in Asia Quest. Mainly because, well, as usual, how cute they are. Especially if you get one up this close. Which rarely happens because, well, they're usually probably sleeping. And, well, <laughs> unlike running, the zoo right now is home to three. An adult female named Cora, as you can see right here, and her two one-year-old cubs. Bandit and Shanti, which were born in early June of 2020. Now, back to the escape artist that we're talking about. Cora, the adult female, actually escaped from her exhibit after a tree branch fell from a thunderstorm the night before. But luckily, she was rescued a day later after she was found at the rhino habitat next to the pachyderm building. Cora probably wouldn't be going too far anyway. Because, well, 
when she escaped, her cubs were probably only about two weeks old. But anyway, like Mother of Red Pandas, the cubs would usually like to stay very close to their mother, but the mother would usually have to go off to find food, especially food that, well, requires milk for the babies. All the tree branches at the top of the exhibit were removed and, well, there has been no escapes ever since. But the pandas still like to climb up and down this tree, as you can see right here, which, well, rarely happens. And, well, this is probably the third time I ever caught a red panda climbing down a tree. If you're ever lucky, I highly recommend you do the red panda tour experience here at the zoo which you'll even get a closer view of the pandas. Like, you'll be going inside the exhibit with one of the keepers, and then the keepers will tell you all you need to know about red pandas. But anyway, unfortunately, though, we had to move on. But um, we can get one more good view of the pandas, as you can see right here. See you later, guys. But anyway, moving on. We're almost halfway done through Asia Quest, which, well, my favorite animal will be the biggest show here in Asia Quest. But our next exhibit is the Asia Quest Aviary. For those of you who are afraid of birds, you can either go to this path right here to skip going inside the aviary. But if you still want to have a look, there's this window right here. This aviary is home to a lot of species of birds. But before, there are actually some pretty cool rare birds in here, like white naped cranes, the rare golden pheasants, and Lord Derby's parakeets. The first birds I saw was a Reeves pheasant, which as you can see right here, and a Smew duck, which is also new. Also a azure winged magpie, which is the first time I ever caught it on camera. But you may wonder what the heck is this? But I highly encourage you to take a look at all the signs right here for all the species in the aviary. But now, let's go inside the aviary, as you can see right here. Which, we'll catch a few more species of birds in that weird mammal that we saw in here. But anyway, as you make it through the aviary, you can still see these signs up here, right in the middle. And, uh, let me just say, I just love these birds, because, well, they're some of the most beautiful birds I have ever seen. But anyway, back on the schedule. Right next to this temple fountain, I found a Nicobar Pigeon, the second time in the zoo that displays them. Anyway, the Reeves Pheasant again, and that mammal was a Reeves Munchak. Like the first animals that we saw at the beginning of our tour, they are another small deer. Three of them live in here, two females and one male. I know one female is named Chally, and the male is named Tyler. But anyway, I also found a black-throated laughing thrush. And, of course, right here is the male, Tyler. Which, the Munjacks in the next animal that we saw is, well, like to hang out in these shelters. But anyway, while he was walking, I managed to cut the fifth animal in the bat exhibit. Look very closely, and those are actually tortoises. They actually eat the largest tortoise in mainland Asia. More specifically, the Burmese mountain tortoise, the fifth animal that lives in the bat exhibit. But they only live with the bats, honey eaters, and the Sheverton during the winter months. Which kind of makes sense. Which, well, they are absolutely adorable as well. As we take one last look at the birds, tortoises, and munchaks, we make it to the exit of the aviary. Which, well, we're about to head to our next and final building here in Asia Quest. First up, right next to the entrance of the building is the first viewing exhibit. Well, it's actually kind of mesh because like the pandas, these animals can easily escape because they have been known to be very good rock chumpers. But anyway, we get a better view of them inside the third building here in Asia Quest. But anyway, you may wonder what the animal was, but that was a markhor, the largest of the goats. And the one the easiest to spot was Sonny, the male that we saw back outside. I do not quite know how many of the goats are in this exhibit, but I'm gonna guess there's probably home to 10, 10 or more. But yeah, here's Sonny again, chilling out on his rock on a pretty hot afternoon, like most of the animals in this region. 
but like I said, the Markors are also pretty good escape artists, and here's why. The very first day they were on exhibit, one of them actually escaped and landed in one of the enclosures that you do not want to be in because they almost got eaten. Luckily, the goat was not harmed. But anyway, we move to the next room of the building, which there are two glass viewings. On the left, as you can see right here, is a new viewing of the Markors, which this one seems to be enjoying lunch. Anyway, back on. We come across this exhibit for the palace cat, a pretty rare species of cat that's hard to find in our zoos, especially pretty active, which I caught this guy walking right in front of me. The first time I ever seen the palace cat walking and being active at the same time, because on most days, they are mostly sleeping. I was very excited to catch the palace cat on the move, because, well, like I just said, they're mostly sleeping. But this guy just came here recently, sometime this spring. But um, yeah, he's kind of, well, nature's grumpy cat, as you kind of see here, making these funny noises. And I actually seen this guy, yes, the same cat, jumping on the glass, scaring a few kids. And uh, as you can see right here, this is kind of an angry mode. Because, well, the cat thinks I'm a larger predator, even though I'm not going to harm it. I'm saying nature's grumpy cat because, well, their face and how the way they act is kind of an angry-ish mode. And as you can see, he's kind of stalking towards me. He knows I'm probably going to be attacking him, even though we're separated by glass. And I would never hurt an animal like that. But anyway, I managed to caught this lucky shot of the palace cat looking right at me the next animal is a larger member of the cat family and in fact it is actually my favorite animal of all time an animal that i've been loving for the past 20 years ever since i was little anyway this is the first viewing for the amore tiger the world's largest cat and the world's largest tiger Fully grown, a male Amor tiger can grow up to 10 feet to 12 feet long and can weigh as much as 700 pounds, nearly twice the size in the, than an adult lion. Female tigers have been known to get up to 8 to 9 feet long and weigh up to 500 pounds. The Amor tiger lives in the Russian Far East, Northern China, and North Korea, and taiga, boreal forests, temperate forests, bamboo forests and mountains. The Amor Tiger is also known as the Siberian Tiger, but people don't call them Siberian Tigers anymore just because they are no longer found in Siberia. The Tiger is the apex predator of his range. It can hunt animals much larger than itself and can eat animals like rabbits, deer, boar, lynx, moose, elk, and even bears even brown bears to be exact and there has been reported sightings of tigers killing and eating bears even though they are the apex predator of the range they actually do have one predator and that will be us unfortunately because due to hunting and habitat loss for human encroachment hunting for their parts skin for traditional chinese medicine the amor tiger is listed as endangered with probably as high as four to 500 individuals left in the wild and about 200 of them in america here at the columbus zoo we had a very successful breeding program in the past decade 13 and more tigers were born here and now it's time for me to introduce you to the zoo's current three and more tigers two females and one male and well see pretty cool encounters as you can see right here the first Amor Tiger that I will introduce you to is my personal favorite. A favorite that I've been loving for the past seven years of my life. And that Amor Tiger would be Mr. Jupiter, the male. Really, it's six years because he came here at the Columbus Zoo in 2015. But anyway, here's some personal facts. And well, as you can see, I really don't have much footage of him. He came here to the Columbus Zoo in March of 2015 to breed because, well, because like I said, more tigers are endangered with uh, about 500 left. And, uh, well, he's been a pretty big success. 
Within the past five years, he is father to six cubs, which, well, all have moved to other facilities around the country. Currently, Jupiter is about 14 years old, making him one of the zoo's oldest tigers, with, along with one of the females that we'll see later. But anyway, Jupiter is a amazing tiger because I never got up close to a fully grown male tiger that's, well, again, like the elephants, much larger than me. One cool thing about Jupiter, he actually came here from the Czech Republic Zoo, somewhere in the Czech Republic, in Europe. If you're ever here at the Tiger Exhibit, I highly recommend you donate to this coin wall. And if you put a coin in... Pretty cool, right? Anyway, a couple years ago, the zoo used to do a thing called Tiger Talk at this spot right here. And here's a small clip of that. Armor tigers. Um, now, out of all of the species of tigers, these are the largest of all of tiger species. Um, these guys can get up to between 500, 600 pounds. Um, I'm sure you'll see a big, a large male like that in the wild. Um, Jupiter is pretty big. Um, he's a lot larger than our other male that we have. Um, Jupiter is pretty new. He just came to us last year, and he actually came from the Czech Republic Zoo. Um, well, actually, it's a zoo in the Czech Republic. I cannot pronounce the name. It's really it starts with a D. That's about all I know. Um, so, um, what Chrissy's doing with Jupiter? She's working with him and doing some training behaviors. Um, when Jupiter came, I will never forget that day that I got a really good look at Jupiter. But well, anyway, here is the main view of the tiger exhibit without the glass. You can see it's a really cool habitat. It's actually one of the best of its kind in America for the tigers. And if you want even more viewing, just walk down just a little more. I guess it's some kind of taiga forest, which actually fits perfectly for the more tigers. And on this hot day, Jupiter had a really good idea. But Jupiter is not the only tiger that lives in this habitat. Jupiter shares his yard with one of the females, and that female would be Natasha, which is this female right here. If you ever wanted to see an active tiger in the morning, come here when the zoo opens at 9am, because, well, Natasha is a very active female, more active than I first thought. Anyway, back to the facts. Natasha came here in 2019, like the Sheberton, she also came here from the Bronx Zoo. She is also brought here because, well, like most tigers here, she is brought here to breed. Which is why she will probably be paired up with Jupiter and hopefully have cubs again. But she and Jupiter actually get along pretty nice, as I heard of, if you follow the zoo's YouTube channel. Which, well, the video shows that the same area where they did the tiger talk, the, the demonstration area, where they talked about each individual tiger here at the zoo. Natasha is about roughly 8 to 9 years old, which is, well, somewhat young for the tiger. Tigers can live up to 20 to 25 years in captivity, about 15 to 20 in the wild. Still, if you want to see an active tiger, please come here, because, well, as you can see, Natasha is very active during the cool hours of the morning, especially when the zoo opens, because, well, like most big cats, Tigers like to come out during the cool hours of the morning because it's a lot more cooler. In the wild, tigers usually hunt during dawn or dusk because, well, like I just talked about, it's much more cooler for them to move. During the hot hours of the day, well, like you just saw with Jupiter in the cave, tigers, well, are probably going to be mostly sleeping during the day. In the wild and in captivity, tigers can sleep up to 18 hours a day. Almost an alliance sleep hours, which is about 20. Another cool reason why you should stop here is, well, have you ever heard a tiger roar? Yes, I'm serious. Because, well, out of all the places that had tigers, Columbus is actually a really good place to see roaring tigers, surprisingly. It's more surprising because a lot of people had not heard a tiger roar. So without further ado, have a listen.
Right across from the tiger exhibit is the tiger statue, a fan favorite for children. And as you go down the path, you notice these pictures of tigers right next to the exhibit. And a message on how the tiger is the, one of the world's majestic animals. We're almost done, but we gotta say hello to an old friend. A friend that's been here for over 10 years. These old boardwalk exhibits, which opened in 1990, is usually home to the zoo's big cats. At one time, it was home to Sumatran tigers, Bengal tigers, cheetahs, and African lions. The lions were the last animals to live in here, which they removed to the new heart of Africa. But today, it's home to the zoo's elderly and more tigers. But more specifically right now, meet Mara, currently the zoo's oldest tiger. She is about 15 years old and she was born in 2007. She arrived a few years later and later became one of the zoo's most successful tigers because she had nine cubs in over the past decade. And surprisingly, recently, I even got footage that, well, you probably have never expected. Have a listen.
Haven't heard that before, huh? Especially the chuffs. Anyway, as we continue down the boardwalk, we come across this shelter, which tells us how the zoos take care of tigers, not only in zoos, and the wild in our own backyards. It also gives us viewings of the two exhibits. One of the one that we just passed, the other one, which we're about to see in a moment. But anyway, these are informations of how the zoo and others can help save tigers, not only in the wild, and in zoos, but in our own backyards as well. Even the paw print display of big cats. Right next to the paw display is the larger of the two exhibits. But we'll have to go down a little further down the boardwalk to get another view of Mara. Again, she is a uh, more tiger, more specifically for elderly more tigers. It is quite large, though not as large as the main tiger exhibit that houses Jupiter and Natasha, but it's pretty standard, especially for an elderly tiger. We're moving on, but not too very far. As I was looking, I managed to find her right here. And of course, on a especially hot afternoon, she was sleeping. She normally walks down this path during the colder hours as well, like Natasha in Jupiter. Unfortunately, that's all about the tigers. And our quest in Asia is almost over. As we get down to the boardwalk, and right next to our restaurant called Lakeside Grill, you can either grab a bite to eat or, as you can see going down the path, you can go through the quest again. But we're not done yet. We got two more residents here at Asia Quest that I have not touched up yet. For those of you who are my early subscribers, you may have noticed that I've uploaded a video of renovations that will occur. Well, here is actually one of them that was actually completed earlier this summer for a brand new resident. We are right next door to the Pachyderm building for someone very new. But, well, we'll get in our view if we continue down the path. This old exhibit, which got renovated during the winter, was the first home to Rosie, an elderly black rhino, which passed away back in November. But here comes a new resident. Perfect timing, too. This big new guy arrived here in Columbus in April of 2021 from a hoofstock facility in Florida. And, well, because he's actually here for an important job. Alright everyone, meet Brian the Greater One-Horned Indian Rhinoceros. Brian is estimated to be 4 to 5 years old, so he's still technically young. And the funny thing is, he's not even fully grown. Because, well, right now he currently weighs 4,000 pounds. Yes, 4,000 pounds. Fully grown in a few years, he might even reach up to 6,000. So, this makes Brian the second largest animal species here at the Columbus Zoo. As I mentioned, Brian here has a very important job because, well, the zoo's sister park, the Wilds, who also has the Indian Rhino, Brian here will possibly be a future bull for the Wilds for breeding to make more Indian Rhinos. Over the past summer, Brian has been enjoying his new home here in Columbus, mostly ha hanging out outdoors, which makes sense because, well, with a new renovated yard with a small pool makes perfect sense for him. The other cool thing about this display is the rhinos can be able to see their larger neighbors right behind them, as you can see right here. But anyways, we're about to meet that guy in the back right now. We are now at our last exhibit here in Asia Quest. And, well, we haven't touched up to one of the elephants just yet. Here at this secondary yard, well, it's a little smaller than the main yard, but it used to hold African elephants. 
Today, you will find Phoebe's second son, Biko. Biko was born here in 2009, making him about 12 years old. Biko got his name from B.E. from Phoebe, his mom, and C.O. from Coco, the zoo's former adult male. Biko's older brother, Bodhi, which he was also born here, was moved in Denver. Like I mentioned earlier, Biko may possibly be breeding with Sundara and Rudy, the young females from Ringing Brothers. But right now, he's been spending a lot of his time alone, which, well, for an elephant around his age, makes perfect sense. Young elephants around his age usually leave the herd around this time. So, this time is actually perfect. Which, I mean, I don't know if he's completely out of the herd. I know he's been separated while Phoebe is getting used to the new calf. Like I said, Biko and Hank do like to hang out together. But now that Biko is going inside, this now means that our first official tour here at the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium is now complete. Asia Quest, my favorite region, which has been my favorite region here at the zoo for the past 15 years. Encountering animals that, well, I probably have never seen before and probably will never seen again. Especially animal encounters like baby tigers, elephants, cute red pandas climbing trees, and much more. I would like to thank everyone for sticking with me through our first tour here at the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium. And, well, enjoying all the information and footage I have taken for this very special episode here in Columbus. The next time we'll be here in Columbus, we'll be going just down a little ways away the, from the tropical rainforests, taiga forests, and mountains of Asia to the deserts and grasslands of Africa. Otherwise, everyone, thank you for joining with me through our Asia quest. And obviously, like and subscribe, and come see the Columbus Zoo's Asia quest, which, well, it'll be one of your favorite spots in the zoo of all time. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.